Welcome to another episode on the Tiny House Master Plan. I'm going to take you for another tour today. We saw a tour of a professionally built house ready for, uh, for hitting the road with a professional builder for its tiny homes. We saw another video of a young couple living in their tiny house quite happily. Well, in this episode, we're going to take you for a tour of my good friend Brian's tiny house. And it's for sale. All right, let's go check out this 30 foot long tiny house. Why not? Who's keeping? <laughs> hey, good morning. Nice of you to come by. Happy to give you a tour. Uh, let's check out the outside. Okay, welcome to uh, welcome to the Resilience. Um, it is named the Resilience. Probably going back ten years. Uh, a lot of planning, a lot of research, and the name Resilience. The reason for it all is just for that: is to be resilient. Uh, in today's time, today's economy, um, uncertain times and uncertain environmental factors perhaps, this setup was designed to be completely resilient. It, it has on-grid and off-grid capability. It's set up for self-reliance. And uh, I, I, think it's, I think it really rings true to the name. So come on, I'll show you more about it. So starting with uh, the package here, the siding, chose the siding, for it's, uh, it's vinyl, there's no maintenance. There's nothing to worry about. Um, that's resilient. There's no work to do, and there's 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 nothing to nothing to go wrong for the most part. So that's set up well. Um, the fresh water intake, this is where the water goes in. There's a thousand liter storage right in the floor right here. Uh, set up for success. There's like six weeks of of um, of storage for water there. Mobility. So these axles here, tri-axle. Uh, it has the mobility to move around. Obviously, tiny homes is pretty common. Um, I believe this is quite oversized for the home. Um, plenty of weight capacity on that. I've hauled it myself. It, it, it hauls nice. It's a, it's a good weight. Okay, so we talk about the windows. Uh, this would be the south facing side. So the house is designed for maximum uh, solar insulation, depending on the orientation of the home. Try to fill up as much windows as possible. It, it does bleed a lot of natural light inside, which I love. Like being inside is a, is a really good feeling. A lot of natural light, it works well. Every window is open, opens as well uh, with screen and locks. So that's that's been awesome. Okay, so we got the west side here. You can see the two leveling jacks. Um, there's there's a leveling jack on every, all four corners. So when I set this up here, we had it done in an hour. It's pretty quick to put a level down. Uh, each spot can be leveled and it's stable. There's no bounce inside, which I like about that. I kind of thought there'd be some bounce, but no bounce. Uh, you can see that exhaust there. That is for the uh, one end of the Luno system, which is the air circulation system. Keeps the, hair, the air moving and clean. There's another one at the opposite end of the home and the air circulates very efficiently. This is be the west facing side of the house. And I didn't put a window there. Most of the winds come from the west. So it'd be very inefficient, uh, cold space there. Didn't think that was wise. Coming around to the back side, the north side here, uh, there is the power intake. So I believe it's a standard 50 amp regular RV power cord. So that can be fully on grid, plugged in as normal, or it's set up for an off grid system to be installed um, at a later date. So it's a good setup there. See three windows on the north side. Uh, this allows a lot more light in. Um, you have the exhaust there for the for the range hood on the oven. It's like a standard home, all good. This window here is in the main floor bedroom. If I put it up high so that there's still privacy in the main floor bedroom, um, you still get natural light, but there's privacy. Your head only comes to here. Obviously, you can put a, a blind or a, or a curtain on it, but you don't get anybody looking at you, which is important, you know? Coming around to the front here, <laughs> We've got quite a nice uh, cedar shake uh, front bulkhead and it wraps around on the front. If you remember on the front there, um, that looks good. So this, this will weather gray, that's what I've seen in a few places, or it can be treated for longer term as well. It, there's no maintenance if you don't want any maintenance from what I understand. Jack here, this is for the propane hookup. Um, you can have a, a auxiliary tank on the side and the propane 
is power powering the domestic hot water heating is in this bulkhead here and the in-floor heat the combi boiler i believe it is called so there you go that is the uh tour of the exterior of this 30 foot long eight and a half foot wide resilience now we'll go inside we'll have a look at the inside come on let's go Except the muddy, it's not all the way in. <laughs> You're just gonna cut that word. I'm not it's... cutting that at all. Listen, you have also, to. this is muddy, so we're gonna just. <laughs> oh, come on, <laughs> just cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how you really feel, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> okay, so here it is. This is the this is the home. So we walk in. A uh, nice master bedroom on the main floor. Nice wide open. Um, it was designed for a Murphy bed and an, and an office combination. Um, so we got a, a very large window in the front here. This would be the south or southeast facing. It was the best design for the home. It flows well. Um, we've got a window on the back, brings in more natural light, but there's still privacy there. And privacy, best thing about this is designed with double door feature, which fully closes the whole room off for full privacy. So I see a lot of tiny homes don't have this option, but I thought it was really necessary here for privacy. Plus it's, I think it's set up well for Airbnb for that reason as well. So that's full privacy. And then the utility room is right in the back here, full access to everything. Um, this is the, this is the, the compu boiler, the propane powered, it's the domestic hot water as well as the in-floor heating. So that's that system. Close this up here. Uh, you can see on the right here is the dual thermostat, which controls the temperature of the home. It's a good design there. That's pretty common in tiny homes from what I see. This is the one at the other end of the Lunos system. The Lunos uh, circulates air, cleans the air, and has a heat recovery system. It gets a really, really efficient system there. There's different settings on it. That works really well. And then what we're standing on is the floor of the master bedroom. The reason it's elevated is this is full of, hot, of water tank storage. So we got over, a th I think it's about a thousand liters of storage, four to six weeks of, uh, of water capacity inside the home. So there's, I designed it like that because there's nothing to worry about outside. You can tie in another, another system if you want, but another tank, but there's nothing to worry about for freezing. It's all inside the home and it's concealed or contained, I suppose. So this is access I have as well. So the water tank actually starts here, goes right to the wall and then wall to wall. So this is full. Put this in here just for additional storage. So wherever there's unutilized space, might as well have storage. So this is storage from front step to the wall. You can put all kinds of things in there. Um, you can actually see, so there's spray foam. Uh, there's a spray foam, I guess it would be a, it's, it's fully encased. The entire home and underneath is fully encased in spray foam. Well, and the walls as well. Spray foam everywhere, really. Let's check out the living room here. Step down and we come to the entrance. It's a nice open space. Obviously picture a uh, couch for a love seat here. It's not included just yet. Um, this here is a auxiliary. So the reason there's two thermostats is this is a, a forced air blower, just the one. So if you leave the door open, bring your groceries in, Temperature drops significantly. That will heat the space up a lot faster than the radiant floor heat. So that's a good design there. Um, big full window that's just poured natural light in. Then part of the living room is also the stairs, which I think is a good focal point and one of my favorite feature of this spot of this space. The stairs obviously access to the loft, but inside this is all storage, right leaded into the kitchen, which is a full pantry top to bottom. This is really handy, integrated storage. It's just really efficient system. It works really well. Up the stairs in the loft, we'll show you that in a minute. That's a really good space, nice and open as well. And leading into the kitchen, which you can see there's some unfinished spaces. Um, there's a few things that are left to be finished, which is kind of more on uh, personal preferences, like paint colors, countertops. Um, these are left to be done for a certain person's, whatever they desire, really, right? But the kitchen is a good space, 
full full range hood here. And I chose with this with this oven because it's a full countertop three burner stove top, but it's also got like you got room to put a roast and pizzas. Like you can I kind of designed it so you can cook for a full family, like a full full meals here, right? So this countertop and then it opens up right there. Full three burner stove. I think that's a good, good setup. Storage all throughout. This is all storage. So the countertop is going to come out with a with an overhang, and then this would be the eat in, um, eat in kind of breakfast nook, I suppose would be. Full farmhouse sink. Everything needs there. This is handy for I found for. Um, just for air ventilation that opens up like that. Brings in more natural light. Um, I did have the lighting. The lighting is is overkill for the space. There's a lot more lumens than necessary, but you always want a little more light. Like you can't have too much light. So, but also everything's on a dimmer because it was designed for off-grid. Um, every light system is on a dimmer switch so that if your batteries are getting low, you still need light, you can dim it down and, and save some of your batteries a little bit there. So, so coming into the kitchen, um, it's a good setup where everything is kind of centralized and picture a fridge here. This is where the fridge would go. Um, I got just two options. You can get a, a small apartment size fridge. And if you do that, there's room for another full pantry, slide out pantry here, or you can maximize it and put a full 28 inch fridge, I believe. Um, fill it right up, the storage underneath. I filled up as much storage as possible there. And if you want to keep that bathroom closed, just close the door. So closing off the bathroom, this door opens up and tucks in right behind the fridge, out of the way, into the bathroom space. We got a full uh, oversized shower, four foot shower. It's important for some long arms, you know. And then storage all through front to back, up and down for laundry. We have a composting toilet tying into the off grid. Everything's on a dimmer in here as well. Overlit, but you want to have a lot more light. And there's natural light from the, the window in here too. And of course, a washer dryer combo. Brand new, unused, uh, with a pedestal sink on top. I think it's a pedestal sink. I don't really know. <laughs> But I like it, it's, it's, it's a bit tall for some people, but I'm a tall guy and it's an efficient use of space. There isn't a separate spot. So that works out really well. And then the other end of the Luno system. So from one end of the home to the other, cycles that air in really nicely. So there you go. So the bathroom and the kitchen is underneath the loft. So we'll head up the stairs and uh, show that to you. Let's go, check it out. Another one of those things unfinished is the floor. Lots of options for the flooring in here. Um, good amount of space. Designed for two. Uh, dimmer on the lights, obviously. Two windows, more for circulation, but it throws a lot of natural light in here as well. This is a really good spot. Um, coming on this angle, this is full closet, full storage, floor to ceiling. I put all the electronics in there in the corner just so that can be all hooked up to an entertainment system on the back side of that, uh, that closet. So then you can drop down arm on a TV and you can watch a movie from the living room. I think it's a really good setup in that regard. The roof on this side is higher. Obviously you can sit up. Uh, my, my youngest kid can stand, plenty of room there. But lofts aren't never are huge anyway, so. Hey, so that's the loft. Um, let's head back downstairs. Ryan, this has been a blast coming to visit you. It's been a while since I've seen you and holy crap, this house is amazing. Thanks man, thanks, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think it's it's pretty exciting you're selling it. So, I mean, let's talk about, let's review again here. We got a, we got a fully legal. CSA a, certified, yeah. The yeah. CSA certified RV. Yeah. It's like 99% done. 
So we just got to get some countertops on here and some just the personal touches for someone's perspective they can they yeah. can put on or we can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the finishing details. So yeah. it's really exciting. Um, and I, and I want to say thank you. This has been a, a, a really cool to come and tour this house to be with you along the journey, actually, too. Yeah, yeah. it has been a heck of a journey and you've been a, you've been a big help in that. Like, you know, you know, this has been many years in the in the making, the, the design, the research, the development. I mean, it's to unpack the whole lifestyle perspective of it. That's that was the intent. That's why it's called the resilience to be off grid, to be to be to be mobile if need be. Um, that was the whole reason for the lifestyle choice, right? Like, yeah, and it's yeah. set up for that. Like, there's a lot of design and and time and money put into it, right? So, and, you, and you've been a big help on that. So, I really appreciate it. Ken. It's been a fun. It's been a blast uh, doing the education side of things is what I do this all for. Yeah. You know, helping other people. Yeah. So, whether it's teaching a workshop or doing a consultancy and helping others in terms of picking builders and reviewing designs and yeah. and going over all the community questions because it's it's a it's a lot to know. Oh man, that was a that was a year and a half process right there. Like we looked at a few homes for sale that were done. Um, I looked at some others without you. None of them fit. None of, just none of them were right at all. Um, and they weren't set up for off grid. There's things like that. Um, and then the build the process that was a long time. There's so many details, way more than I ever knew. Yeah. And you, you guided me well on that. So I, re I really appreciate your. It was a good partnership. Like I, I couldn't I, see. I couldn't have done this without you. It wouldn't have went near as good. There wouldn't have been near as many smart choices uh, without you, man. So thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very it's, much. It's appreciate been a blast it. working with you. <laughs> Whew. All right. Another tour, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, we've shown now a professional builder. We've shown a young couple living in a tiny house. And we've shown Brian's tiny house, what she has for sale for you. These have all been interruptions in our regular show. We're in this building of this state-of-the-art tiny house, which we're going to be taking for a grand tour across Canada and then giving away. So make sure to like and subscribe to follow on this journey. Contest information for the house giveaway will be down below, along with Brian's information if you want to buy this beautiful tiny house. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next episode of the Tiny House Master Plan.